Okay, we. I hope you all of you had a restful weekend, so we can try and um, proceed. Um, I hope we can. Uh, we are able to see my screen. So today we'll uh, try to have a look at um, the cycle of this virus that we've now gotten interested in. What happens, for example, from uh, when you the virus you get exposed to the virus? Which stages does it go through? And um, we also try to have an understanding of uh, how now the ART, the antiretroviral therapy, the various combination of HIV medicines, uh, try to target which stage of the life cycle of that particular virus. So remember we said for HIV, there is no cure. There's just treatment. You can only be treated, but you cannot be cured. So you use ART just to manage the virus, but the ART does not cure the virus. Okay, so ART is that combination of various HIV medicines that are used to treat the infection. So the sad reality with ART is you mostly have to use it almost for the rest of your life. There are some which you have to take daily, but there are others currently which you can be given like an injection for a month, okay, depending on maybe what you do. So you are a long distance, for example, truck driver, and you cannot go to your hospital close by for continuous supply. So you can be given an injection that will last you for uh, your entire trip. Okay, so <clears throat> this, the medicines that are combined to create the ART are given different uh, classification on the basis of how they target and fight the HIV virus. So each of those groups targets a particular stage, a particular step in the life cycle of this virus. So currently you find that this ART, the, 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 that combination comes with at least two different drug classes. So you are given one that targets a particular step, then it's combined with another one so that it can enhance the ability of that combination to fight against the virus. So ART will largely be trying to stop the HIV virus from multiplying. And once the virus cannot multiply, then you end up with less numbers of the virus within your body. When the numbers are reduced, then the damage that will happen on the immune system, especially the CD4 cells, will be reduced. When the damage on the CD4 or on the immune system is reduced, then at the end of it, you have the transition from HIV infection to AIDS. At times, it can be prevented. So you don't have AIDS because AIDS is the adverse, is the extreme stage of HIV infection. So when you are on ARTs, you cannot cure, but ARTs will just help someone who has the virus to live a longer, healthier life. And it's just not about the person who is infected, but it also helps in preventing possible transmission of that virus to others. Maybe you have workmates, you have uh, a wife, 
when you continuously take the ARTs as per the recommendation of your healthcare providers, then you reduce your ability to transmit the HIV virus. So let's now have a look at the mm -hmm. stages that are involved in the HIV life cycle. So there are basically seven stages. There are basically seven stages that make up the life cycle of the HIV virus. The first step is binding. Okay? So binding is where the virus attaches to a particular cell. So it binds, it attaches. So as it attaches, then it fuses. So the first stage is binding. The second stage is fusion. Then the third stage is reverse transcription. Reverse transcription is a process in which now the virus begins to change its genetic material. Okay, I'll not go into details because I understand that we are from very different backgrounds. Okay, and then there is integration. Now where the genetic material of the virus gets into the genetic material of the host. Okay. So then after that, as the host genetic material replicates, the, vi the virus material also replicates along. Then after the virus material has replicated, the various products that are created after that are now sent to be used to assemble the virus. So each and every part of our body is as a result of the genes that we carry. So the various parts of this enzyme, that's where the one I'm showing on my screen, is as a result of the replication and the transcription and the eventual translation of its genetic material. So after the replication process, after the virus genetic material has replicated inside the host the genetic mechanism, the products that are released are now used to assemble a new virus particle. Then is that virus now that will leave the cell that it had infected to go and infect a new one. The process of leaving is now what we are calling budding. Okay, The process of leaving one cell to another is what we are calling budding. So the first step is binding, okay? which means now the HIV virus has to attach, to bind is to attach. It has to attach to a particular cell before it eventually manages to enter. To fuse is to join. So as it attaches, then it fuses, it joins up with that cell. So the HIV virus then enters, fuses, disappears into that cell. Upon getting inside, the genetic material of the virus begins to be replicated, begins to be transformed. Okay, So the virus itself does not have the mechanism to do that. So once it gets inside, then there is a reverse transcription. The virus is an RNA, RNA virus. It needs, RNA is single-stranded. So it has to be made to be double-stranded. So that reverse transcription does that. It makes it double-stranded. And that's why you, we, the, 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 the HIV virus is called a reverse, has a, 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 an enzyme we call a reverse transcriptase. Okay, a reverse transcriptase that does that. So once the RNA, genetic material of the virus is converted into a double strand using a reverse transcription process by the enzyme called reverse transcriptase. Then now the genetic material of the virus, which at this stage is double stranded, integrates, to integrate is to join. It joins the host genetic material. So in a join, our genes in a join our genome. So as you produce your own proteins, you also produce the protein of the enzyme. That process is replication. When you, we double our 
genetic material copies, that is replication. Then after the replication, there is transcription and translation. So at translation, we form proteins. Then now the proteins are assembled. So our proteins are assembled and the viral proteins will also be assembled into a new virus. After assembly, the new virus now has to leave to go and attack another cell. The process of leaving is what we are calling budding. Okay. So there is binding, there is fusion, there is reverse transcription, there is integration, replication, assembly, and budding. Okay. So those are the seven steps that are involved in the life cycle of the virus. So when you look at the HIV virus that I'm projecting, I hope we are able to see it. I want just to explain a few things about it. So there is a virus will have an envelope, which is an outer covering. Okay, so an envelope is like um, our skin, for example. That's the outside protection. Then for the HIV virus, it has what you call the glycoprotein. Glycoprotein is a combination of starch and protein. Glyco is from glucose. That is starch. Okay, so that is a combination of starch and protein. And that is the, the glycoprotein is just what the enzyme now uses for attaching, the spike that it will use to attach, okay? Then now inside, so on the outside, you have the HIV virus, uh, the HIV envelope, and it has spikes. Those are, the spikes are made up of a mix of starch and protein. We call them glycoprotein. So, there is a component of that glycoprotein that the, this enzyme now uses to attach to the CD4 cells. The glycoprotein that the HIV virus uses is called, is called GP120, glycoprotein 120. That is what it uses to attach okay, to the CD4 cell. So on the outside, you have the HIV envelope. Then the virus is not smooth. It is spiked, econamoeba. Then now inside, the genome is surrounded by a capsid, something that covers, okay? It covers the genetic material of this virus. And this is an RNA virus, meaning that the genetic material of the virus is made up of RNA and not DNA, okay? So the RNA is what directs which product that will be formed. That is the gene for the virus, the genome for the virus. So it contains instruction in how to form the capsid, the envelope and any other component that is important for the virus to survive. So once it enters our bodies, it is the RNA, the HIV RNA genome that will eventually end up joining our genomes, so that as we produce our own proteins, we also, we also help the enzyme to produce its own. We help the virus to produce its own because the virus does not have an independent genetic machinery. So in a tegemea, the host, okay? So I will not go deeper than that because I know there are people here who are not necessarily biologists. Okay, so I'll just project this and try to explain. Bits, why you are told, for example, you can take a, a, a post-exposure or a pre-exposure. When you are anticipating exposure, unambiwa to me at our flani, okay? The drugs you use, if you've been raped, for example, you are told, to me, Adawa, be, uh, between this period, uh, ensure that we will So we want to see now 
where those particular drugs will be targeting. Ukiambiwa meza hii dawa, meza hiyo dawa ingine. So the first stage is binding, which is, which is also called attachment. In this process, the HIV virus binds or attaches to the receptors that are found on the CD4 cell. So when you take the PrEP, the pre-exposure, which is pre-exposure means before the exposure, okay? Before the exposure. Then you want to ensure that you will stop the binding from happening, okay? So you are taking drugs that will antagonize, that will ensure the binding of the HIV virus to the receptors found on the human cell does not happen. So you are preventing this binding, okay? PrEP mostly targets to prevent that binding. So there are people, when you look at this diagram, unaona kuna some red signs, wameandika stop, okay? There are people, for example, who are uh, discordant couples. So someone is positive, but the partner whom they engage in and protected coitus remains negative, okay? We've known, especially in non-African populations, that when you have a mutation in a gene called CCR5, okay? If you have that gene, a, a, a mutation in that gene, then there will be no binding because that gene, the CCR5, is called chemokine receptor 5. So once you have a gene, at, uh, a mutation at that particular gene, then you will not get HIV if that mutation is double, if you are deployed. You don't get HIV at all. It means there can be no binding. The virus cannot attach to your cell, okay? So in the event that attachment has happened, then the next step is fusion. And at that place now, the envelope of the HIV and the CD4 membrane, they begin to join. So if you now have to take drugs to ensure that even if binding has happened, but you want to stop this second process, the fusion inhibitors. You take drugs that will ensure the HIV envelope and the CD4 membrane do not join. If they don't join, then the, 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 the contents of the, of the HIV capsid will not eventually enter the, the human cell. Okay, so from fusion onwards, you are likely now to be dealing with uh, post-exposure, the PEP. But may, uh, largely the pre-exposure will be dealing with the stopping of binding. And that's why you are told, come and PEP umeze within a specific period of time. Because based on the life cycle, binding should take a given number of hours. I think beyond 24 hours, then you are risking too much. So beyond that, you need PEP, okay? So you have to deal with now within a particular time period. Sababu, time is of, of essence. So in case binding happened, you delayed and now fusion has happened. So the HIV, the envelope of the HIV virus and the membrane of the CD4 have fused. Then now the HIV, its genetic material, its capsid has now entered the CD4 cell. So then what do you do at that point? Okay, so you can now try to stop the next process, which is the reverse transcription. The reverse transcriptase is an enzyme that the HIV RNA will use to be converted into a double strand. So once that conversion has happened, then integration can happen. So if you stop that, if you stop the conversion of HIV RNA 
which is a single strand into a double-stranded RNA, then you will stop integration. It must be double-stranded for there to be integration. So then at the third stage, we are just trying to stop that process of converting a single-stranded RNA into a double-stranded RNA. Once that has happened, the reverse transcription, which is done by an enzyme called a reverse transcriptase. So once that conversion happens, then that material, the, the, the new genetic material for the virus, which is now double-stranded, will be able, able now to integrate, to join the host genetic material. So from fusion to reverse transcription, now we are talking of PEP, the post-exposure. Still, time is of essence because these stages are estimated to happen within a particular time frame. If that transcription has already happened, it is after that change, the reverse transcription, that now integration will happen, which means now the HIV genetic material will join the genetic material of the host cell. That process is what we are calling integration. The enzyme that does that is called an integrase. So if you are not able to stop the reverse transcription, then you can target and inactivate that enzyme that we call integrase so that the HIV genetic material should not join the host genetic material. The virus cannot produce its own, it does not have its own factory. In Ataka Kutumia, the factory of the host. That's why in Akuja na in Ingiza, it's genetic material kwa the host machinery. So if you are able to stop integration, then you will stop the production because for the enzyme to produce its material, it must join the genetic material of the host. So there are drugs that can do that. This is now within the post exposure. So there, that's why we said there are various combinations. Okay. Now, just in case, still you delayed and integration happened. You can try, but now this is fairly very difficult stopping replication because the replication that is happening is of the host you cannot stop your own replication from up beyond integration whatever remains is just to try and stop the release stop the budding okay you stop the budding because with the replication it is the genetic material of the host, in this case, the human, that will now be producing copies of itself. As it produces those copies, then in the process, also the virus genetic material is replicated and the virus particles are also produced and then assembled into a new virus. That is now what is happening at step six. Okay. So once the new virus has been produced, assembled, it now needs to leave that particular cell so that it can go and infect a new cell. The only place you can now try to stop is at uh, stage seven now, the budding, the exit of the new virus out of the host cell so that it can infect another one. Okay, so you can at this stage inhibit an enzyme that will now be used to convert the what is initially inactive non infectious HIV virus into an infectious one. So if you stop that virus, uh, that, that, that uh, enzyme, which is a protease that is supposed to convert. If we stop that enzyme, if we inhibit it, then we cannot have 
an infectious virus leaving the infected cell. Okay, so those are the seven stages indicating how the various ART combinations help. The pre-exposure one targets largely an anticipation of exposure. Okay, and then now the post-exposure, you begin to target the various stages. You want to target fusion, Okay, you want to target all other stages in between, but once integration has happened, you cannot stop any other apart from budding. Okay, so you cannot stop any other apart from budding. So those are the seven stages with indications on where the various drugs that are form part of the ART combination will be targeting the pre-exposure and the post-exposure. Of importance is you don't use the pre-exposure and the post-exposure as a routine medication. You are supposed to use it as an emergency. See, Okwamba, you know, you're going to meet someone whose vi uh, status you don't know and you continuously take this PEP or PrEP, okay? So you only need to use them as emergency options, but not every other time you think you've exposed yourself and then you use it, okay? So you should not use them all the time. The best way, ambia uyo jama muende mupime ujue haliyake, okay? Or use condoms. Okay, just use condoms. So at times, I'm trying to avoid getting into the very technical bits of uh, the HIV infection and lifestyle, uh, life cycle bits. So that's because I know we, we have people who are taking very different courses. If I was teaching, for example, the BSc biology or the biology teachers, it could be different. But now that we have people who are what wanafanya computer, wengine wanafanya business, na wengine wanafanya journalism, so we'll stop. Simon Ongura has raised his hand. Simon, what do you want to ask or what do you want to say? Maybe type. I don't know if they are, you are muted or not. Just type. If you have a question or something, just type. Or you raised your hand by accident, maybe. Okay, I'll... I think that you raised it by accident. So... The seven stages through which a, a HIV infection happens, we've seen. Two participants have raised their three. Please type, maybe you are muted. So just type the question you have. What is the difference between ARVs and ART? Who, who has asked that one? So ARVs are antiretrovirals. Those are the specific drugs that are targeting any virus. Okay. So antiretrovirus. It is, it, it is a drug that is working against a virus. So an ARV can be one drug. Okay. But ART is now a combination of several ARVs. An ART is a combination, is a combined effort that you are bringing in several ARVs so that you can target the st uh, different stages of the virus life cycle. So an ARV will target one stage. 
but in ART, you want to combine several ARVs so that you can attain a better uh, result. Okay. Any other? Please repeat stages of HIV from integration to body. Okay. So I'll go back and uh, so we have the seven stages. The first stage is the binding or attachment. This is equivalent to uh, when you want to enter into a car or you enter into a house, saingine lazima uende ushike ufungue. So iyo touching, kushika iyo mlango ya gari ama mlango ya nyumba. That is the binding. Okay? Then now after that, as you begin to enter that house, you are sort of entering for the virus that is fusion. Okay? So the virus is beginning now to join its envelope and a membrane of the cell. Then once inside the envelope of the HIV virus is gone, and now what is left is just the genetic material of the HIV virus. The genetic material of the HIV virus is RNA ribonucleic acid. The RNA has to be converted. It is a single strand. So it has to be changed into a different form that will now be able to look like the material of the host. So the process of changing from RNA to a genetic state that is closer to the, to, to, to the genetic material of the host that process is what we call reverse transcription. Once reverse transcription has happened, the virus does not have its own machinery, okay? So it has to use the machinery of the host cell, meaning the gene, the genetic material of the virus, lazima ingie, it has to join the genetic material of the host organism. So it integrates, to integrate is to join, okay? Once integration has happened, the genetic material of the host keeps copying itself, doubling in numbers. So the genetic material of the host, as it keeps replicating, then it will begin now to also replicate the genetic material of the virus that got integrated. Okay. So that is the replication bit. At that point, it is the host that takes over. The, the product of that replication, it ends up by creating different proteins. So initially, if you don't have a HIV infection, then all the proteins that you create are for your own benefit. But once, but once there is a HIV infection and integration has happened, then upon replication, the products that are churned out are not only unique to the host, but are also representative of the HIV virus, okay? They are also representative of the HIV virus. So as the products of the virus are being churned out, they are now taken up and be used to create new viruses. So that is the assembly. They are used to assemble new viruses. Then after a new virus has been assembled, Initially, it is immature. When it is immature, it is not infectious. So after assembly, the virus that is obtained cannot infect. But now it has to be turned around by an enzyme we call a protease, so that it is converted from being non-infectious to being infectious. 
Once that conversion has happened, then that virus can now be budding. It can now bud and go and infect because it is now infectious. Okay, so it can leave the first cell where the attachment happened and now go and attach to the next cell and the seven stages of the life cycle proceed. Okay, I hope that is clear. I'll keep checking if there is anyone else who has a questions. Okay. So, we now look at the stages. So, how HIV progresses from the point of infection all the way to now the, okay, Martin Olueni has raised up his hand. Martin, I, you might have been muted. Please just type, type your question. I should be able to see it. When will it be the cut? Would I do it too? After using the protein inhibitor, does the host stop being infected or does it remain on them without being? Once you are infected, you are infected. So you are only stopping the increase in the number of, of, of in the viruses within your body. So the protease cannot stop, cannot kill the virus. Okay. It only tries to reduce its multiplication. Between ARVs and ART, which one is used on an advanced stage? ARVs are used, ARVs are individual, but ARTs is a combination. ART is a combination of several ARVs. So the ARV, for example, that will be used to target, to stop the, bind, the, the binding, the attachment is different from the ARV that will be used to stop the budding process. Okay, so different ARVs will be will have different functions. Someone wants me to display. I don't have that that either. So you can go to the shops, try to find one. But I cannot display what you are asking on the screen. I'm sorry. Okay. Can HIV be, be treated at the first stage? HIV can be treated but not cured, okay? And as we've seen, the treatment of HIV is through ART, antiretroviral therapy, which is a combination of several ARVs. We've seen the stages of the, a, H, the HIV life cycle. So various... ART combinations will target different stages. There are some, the pre-exposure prophylaxis, for example, is a combination that targets to stop attachment. Then the post-exposure one is a combination which will target either to stop fusion, integration, or all the other processes all the way to budding. So you can try and stop these various stages of the HIV life cycle. Okay, the only thing you can't do, you cannot stop replication because that is now in the host. You cannot also not, you cannot as well stop assembly. Okay, once infected, you cannot be cured. Yes, that's true. Currently, with the current machinery, you can't. So you have the virus, but now you will just try and manage it. Someone asks if I can share notes in the WhatsApp. I think I did. I gave them to someone who must have shared. How does a HIV manifest itself after infection? We'll see that. Okay. When you stop it at first stage, still it cannot be cured. Yes. 
once you have the HIV infection in you, the HIV virus, the current science we have is that you cannot cure it. You can only try and do it and treat the, those various stages so that you stop the, the load of the viruses inside our bodies. And you also try to lengthen Okay, you try to lengthen the stages between infection and HIV. Okay, can a newborn baby with an infected mother use ARVs? When a pregnant mother, when someone is HIV positive, then becomes pregnant. There are drugs they are put on. I think from the second trimester, then they will try and ensure kwamba how your mama heart has had the normal way. Okay, so they'll have to, the mother will give birth through the cesarean section. Then after that, after kiza, mutoto asinyonyeshwe, na tena mutoto atayekewa dawa for the first few months as they keep testing the child. Okay. So the mother, uh, at some stage of pregnancy, the pregnant lady will be given some ART. Then after birth, which is the cesarean section, the child will also be put on some ART combination. And of importance is the mother should not breastfeed the child. So those who have CCR antagonists, can they infect others? It is not you who have. Whoever has, if you have the mutation of the CCR5 delta, we call it delta 32 diploid, then you cannot get the virus. Okay? You cannot get the virus. How can I be able to know that ARVs are working? They check the viral load. Okay, to me, your ARV, you continuously go for clinics, wakiangalia, wak they do an analysis to determine the number of virus particles you have inside you. So if the virus load is reducing, then it means the ARVs are working, the ART is working. What about the drugs taken before the end of 72 hours? This one is doubting his or her. One thing is don't doubt, proof. Kama unaona uyu muto haujui hali yake ya kiafya, use protection or don't just get intimate. But if you end up, maybe you've been raped, take the drugs before 72 hours. That's now the pep. Because after 72 hours, possibly the virus has already budded. Imetoka, budding has happened. So when you are taking the drugs within 72 hours, you are trying to ensure that all the stages of the HIV virus should not be complete. You are trying to arrest that. Okay. So the 72 hour thing is because the life cycle of the HIV virus in a core complete after 72 hours. That's why you are told to mirror your dawa within 72 hours. Is it possible for an expected mother in fact? Yes, it's possible. Be put on the drugs. So attend clinics. Utapatiwa dawa when you are pregnant. Utaambiwa venye mtoto atazaliwa CS. Then kuna dawa yenye utapewa. Mtoto kama akomdogo apewe. Then after some time, they keep monitoring the status of the child. A pregnant mother, you can, a, a HIV positive mother cannot be told to breastfeed. Okay, so pre, uh, mothers who are HIV positive will be advised not to breastfeed their children. Condoms are not 100% sure. They only reduce chances of transmission, but they don't stop. They only reduce, they don't stop. Okay. What is the function of drugs we take within 72 hours in case you're pretty sure? That is a post exposure. So it's trying to ensure that even if you are infected, the cell that has the virus, the virus should not leave that cell to go and infect another one. 
Okay, the virus should not leave that cell to go and in, in infect another one. If you take the ARTs, you reduce the virus count within your body, but you don't eliminate the virus completely. Hakuna dawa ya ukimu yenye itafanya upone. Iko tuna dawa ya kukusaidia kuishi vizuri. Dawa ya ukimu mzuri ni kuhakikisha kwamba usilale na mtu mwenye ujui status yake bila kutumia kinga. Okay? Bila kutumia kinga. Hiyo ndiyo dawa mzuri. Usiende kufanya mapenzi kama umelewa. It impacts your judgment. Above all, get to know the status of that person that you are. You want to get engaged in in an intimacy situation. Can HIV cope? Yes, I think I've answered that. Someone is saying there is a herbal which you know there has not been approved for that, okay? We have all manner of people saying kwamba kuna hii dawa inatibu, kuna hiyo dawa inatibu. Okay, so all uh, to us scientists up to now, that is just but a what? A claim. So kuna watu wanasema wakona herbal medicine za kutibu HIV until the point where we'll prove that then that's when we can be able to say there is a herbal medicine that can cure HIV. Someone is saying, I'm breaking, I'm sorry, I'm in the university, na kama sasa internet inasumbua, maybe that's all we can just try and do. After how long will one know that he or she is positive? To be positive is not after how long. If you went for a test, depending on the threshold, we'll, we, we'll see the ways in which you can be tested. If you went for a test, depending on uh, the accuracy, okay, there is a test, if it's a, a, a genetics test, the PCR, unaeza patikana nayo, even ata ukiipata saina wende upimwe from PCR itapatikana. But now if you are going for the antibody or antigen tests, then that can need some time for your body to generate the antibodies. So the time factor depends on which diagnostic method you are going for. Okay, which diagnostic method you are going for. Someone is asking, how many times are you supposed to get tested to prove that you are negative? Currently, they just do one. Ukienda tu, they talk to you, they determine your level of risk. Then they do one test. Okay, they do one test. Then if they determine kwamba you are high risk, they can tell you to come back after some time maybe after a month, then they do another test. Okay. Initially, they were doing two tests at a go. So zote zilikuwa zifanane. If you do a first test, then after some time, they do a second test. Both of them should turn a similar result. In the case that the, 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 the two tests turn contradicting results, they will do a third one called a tiebreaker. So kama ya kwanza imetoa negative, ya pili katoa positive. Then watafanya ya tatu. Ya tatu ikitoa negative ama positive, then they will go with that. Okay. Uh, uh, there was a point when we were in, uh, I was in undergraduate. There's a friend of mine who went with a girlfriend. I was in Maseno. They went to Kisumu and decided to do a HIV test. Okay. The man turned negative, but the lady turned uh, positive. Of course, it brought a lot of issues, but later they were called the following week from that particular lab. Wakambiwa kwamba, the reagents that were used to most people in that week, zilikwazi may expire. So everybody was called back and they had to do another test. So all I'm saying is, at times you can go, be subjected to a test, and in science, we call it a false negative or a false positive. Okay. But because that is a test done by a human being, it can either let a result in Missouri or a result by. Okay. 
So why is it that a HIV patient takes Panadol before he, I don't know, I've never heard that Panadol thing. In high school, we were told there is HIV medicine. There is no treatment. There is no cure for HIV. Okay. But Okay. Hello, Doc. Yes, yes. Uh, that question. Yeah. Question uh, a student is asking uh, why is it that when a HIV positive person goes to test after taking Panadol, mm -hmm. the test turns uh, negative? Negative, yeah. That's the question. Okay. Um, Panadol is. um is a drug that is used to cure pain. Okay, so okay, that's why unakuwa na kichwa inakuma, unapewa panado. I don't know how that will be connected to the detection of the HIV virus. I think that is just one of the myths, the false stories, Zenyeziko. I don't think you can do that. Kwamba ukimeza panado, alafu wende upime, itakuwa negative. You can't. If you are negative, you are negative, with or without Panadol. And there are people, in fact, who are allergic to Panadol. So does it mean they always turn positive? Okay. I think that's just one of the many fallacies, the false stories that people come up with. Okay. Because of, biologically, there is no connection in which a drug that helps to reduce pain can now end up distorting or uh, hiding the presence of a virus within your blood system. So, so I, I, I don't think I don't think that's true. After how long? After how long period of time does a virus move from one stage to another? The periods differ. Okay, depending on one the health status of an individual. So, but. What we know is it takes 72 hours for, in most people, for the virus to complete the, 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 the total process, the total life cycle. Okay, so if you are anticipating exposure, use drugs before. But in case you realize you've already been, you might have been exposed, then use the drugs within 72 hours. Okay. Someone is saying, Hujanijibu yangu. Please type again. Zinaenda araka sana. So, Sion. Can viruses be transmitted through kissing? Yes. If you have a, a, a cut in your mouth, you get the virus. Can prayers heal? I don't know. I don't want to say yes or no. Whoever said, I've not, uh, I've not answered, please write again. I would like to answer. Are the oral test kits completely accurate? Yes, they are. The oral kits are. The only problem with the home testing is you know, most people go to test for HIV to see how negative they are. That's why when you go to test, unambiwa uko positive, unanza kupingana, unasema, ay, apana. Because you went to prove how negative you are. So if you are not sure that you can withstand a positive result alone in the house, avoid personalized testing. Kuna mutu akipima aone apatikane positive kwa nyumba, ata commit suicide. Ama the, 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 the boyfriend or the wife or the husband. If that is you, please avoid. Okay? Avoid, avoid, avoid. Can a person with the blood group O fail? No, there is no connection within with the, between blood groups and HIV contraction. You will just contract HIV irrespective of your blood group. Can you infect other people when your viral load is low? No. When... When the virus load has gone low, at times it becomes, it, you cannot notice it. So at that time, people are now told to even go ahead and 
if you are the, the, their timing, for example, to have a, to have children, Munandiwa sasa muzai sai when the virus load has gone very low. At times, it gets to levels that are not detectable. Okay. The, someone is asking the color. There can be no color for the genitalia, which is infected or uninfected. There is no color. The only sign of infection is a diagnostic test, which we'll be looking at next. Can HIV affect you when you are a carrier? When you are a carrier, it means you have it, but it cannot affect you, but you can only infect other people. For HIV, there is no carrier. Okay? For HIV, there is no carrier. A carrier, we unakuwa na iyo ugonjwa, lakini huwezi, wewe hauna symptoms, but we unambukiza watu wengine. Ni kama we ni boda boda, umebeba muzigo, but iyo muzigo si yako, unapelekea tu mwenyewe. So for HIV, there is no carrier. All of us are infected. Okay, you are either discordant, which means you can't be infected. Apart from HIV, the only other virus that you are, which is also sexually transmitted, but which men are carriers, is the virus that causes cervical cancer. Okay, because men don't have a cervix. So we can carry the virus as men, but we don't suffer that disease. So we are carriers. But now women are the ones whom we deliver the virus to. And they get, because they have a cervix, so they have cervical cancer. So when you are a carrier, you have the virus, but it does not affect you. Wewe unapeleka tu, unabeba tu, unaenda kupeana kwa mtu mingini. So for HIV, there are no carriers. Okay. The apps used to test HIV are not accurate. Apps are not accurate, so don't rely. Because I don't know even what you will use on an app. Will you scan your eye? Okay. A baby born positive but given ART from birth will it get cured? You cannot get cured from HIV. So when you are talking about ART, it is not about curing. It is about treating. Okay. So... Uh, once you have HIV as a virus inside you, you have it for life. You can only reduce the number by using the ART medications. Okay, so once you test positive, you will never test negative again. Okay. Is it true that within first six weeks of infection, the person tests HIV negative? There is a window period. There is a time, for example, which takes before your body produces the antibodies that the kits which you use to test will pick them. So when you are using a kit two hours after exposure, yet that kit is supposed to detect antibodies that are produced 12 hours later. Then within, before the 12 hour period, you will still uh, test negative when you are positive. Okay. So the idea of being negative yet you are positive is about the window period. What you are looking for and how long does it take for it to manifest within your body? Okay. Okay. Someone is asking a very interesting uh, question that people who are infected, I may indicate kwa Kiswahili but sita soma kwa Kiswahili, that when people are infected and they are getting intimate, is it a must that they use condoms? Yes. With viruses, they, they, they are what we call ecotypes. You have, for example, HIV-1, there is a clade within it. So you can have HIV-1, maybe subclade V. Then someone else has HIV-1 subclade C. So when these two people, all of them are having viral infection, but of different clades. So to prevent cross-infection, the transfer of one clade to another person who has a different clad, use protection. Okay? Use protection. So when you say I'm HIV positive, so I, I don't care about any other, and then you end up now having all the clades that are out there. And now when you have a huge clad combination within your body, then management becomes a problem. 
So irrespective of your HIV status, it is always advisable that you continue to live positively. Still protect yourself from any other infection and protect others from the infection that you carry. There is no drug that can cure HIV, so don't look for that name. You will not get it. test negative I think we are we are through with the question because now people are just going back, 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 and back. Okay. So let's assume that you have and you don't have any wound in the mouth, but you have kissed HIV positive person who does. The truth is, most of the time you will have a cut somewhere. Okay, you will have a cut somewhere. You are brushing your teeth today morning. You are brushed over your toothbrush. You go mahali komdomo, so you can never. So just to be safe, when you think you don't know the status of an individual, don't kiss. Don't get intimate without protection. That is the bottom line. Okay, okay I think we proceed now. You can proceed because I think we've... Uh... Is it possible for a person to be negative? No. Once you have virus inside your body, you cannot test positive. You cannot test negative. You will always test positive. What changes is just the viral load. What changes is just the viral load. Okay. Let's now see how the infection progresses. So I hope we are able to see what I'm sharing now. It's just a representation of your body fluids and upon infection now, the virus begins to increase within your body. So before infection, in the first tube, that's how your body looks like. But then after some point, you are exposed to the virus. Then the entire life cycle of it happens inside your body. And now there is an infection. Okay. So the virus will target the CD4 cells, which are now present in the first tube before HIV infection. Those CD4 cells are very clean. Okay. So once infection happens, the glycoprotein, the, 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 the spikes on the HIV virus envelope will bind to the membrane of the CD4 cell. Okay. Then as time goes by, if you use ARTs, if you use the antiretroviral therapy, you will reduce this period between now the infection stage and full-blown HIV infection, which is now AIDS. So as you see, as time increases, in the first uh, tube before infection, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have 10 CD4 cells. But upon infection, the number of CD4 cells begins to reduce. Okay. As you can see now, the number of CD4 cells begins to reduce. And that's why one of the tests to see if you are possibly infected with HIV, they do a CD4 count. Okay, they do a CD4 count. There are two cells that are very important within our body's immune system. CD4 is the first line of defense among the defense cells. Mm -hmm. So there is another group which we call the CD8, CD8 cell. So when the CD4 cell becomes infected because the HIV virus has bound to its cell membrane, 
the CD8 nazo zinatolewa kukuja kutoa the CD4 that have foreign particles attached to them. So any CD4 cell that will be having a HIV virus attached itatolewa. So ikitolewa there will be a reduction in the CD4 cells. The CD4 cells are part of the protection that we have. So that's why with continued infection, you continuously now have a reduction in your CD4, the number of CD4 cells within your body. As that number of reduction, the, as that reduction in the number of CD4 cells happen, you reduce now your defense, the number of defense soldiers, the defense cells that you have. Then now the opportunistic infections, they can now happen to your body because the CD4 will prevent any other disease from attacking you. But now HIV comes and attacks the CD4. Then CD8 comes and reduces the CD4 that is attacked. Okay. Wakitoa CD4 yenye inatumika kama watchman, then sasa mwizi anaweza ingia raisi. So the opportunistic infections come in. So after infection, the first phase will be the stage will be the acute HIV infection. As the virus continues to multiply, as time goes by, the virus increases, but the CD4 cell reduces. Then now, when you get to AIDS, so in between is the chronic HIV infection, but now at the very extreme end is at the AIDS stage. So at that point, the CD4 cells have almost been wiped out. Now wanna happen in Mebaki Moja. So we have a significant increase in the number of HIV virus particles within us and a corresponding reduction in the CD4 cells. So if you were to count upon HIV infection, for example, if we do a CD4 cell count, before infection, you had 10. But after infection, it goes to five and it keeps reducing as the HIV progression happens. When you now take ART, which is a combination of several ARVs, what ART will do will reduce the number of HIV virus particles within your body. As that number reduces, it means the number of CD4 cells that will be removed by the CD8 will also reduce. So a reduction in the HIV particles means an increase in the CD4 cell. An increase in the CD4 cell count within our bodies implies a proper defense mechanism. Then once we have a proper defense mechanism, then the transition from the point of infection to AIDS lengthens. Inachukua muda. Lakini usipo kutumia yu ART, you easily die from the HIV infection. Because now, you'll have a super a, a supernatural increase in the number of HIV virus within your body. As the HIV virus numbers increases, that's the load, then the number of CD4s decreases. As the number of CD4 decreases, then you are now subjected more to the opportunistic infections because your immunity has suffered a great deal. Okay. So those are the three stages of through which the progression happens. Okay. So the acute infection is the earliest stage of HIV infections. And it will develop at most within a month. Okay. And at that point, you suffer from mild symptoms. But this will differ. So there are people who will have flu. Others, because of a foreign particle, which is a virus inside your body, your body develops some fever. So unexplained fever. People will have all manner of symptoms within that acute infection stage. So during that time, the virus is spreading, is multiplying rapidly within our bodies. And as it does that, 
it is attacking and destroying the CD forces. Okay, is attacking and destroying the CD4 cells. So generally, during that stage, because there are so many other CD4 cells for the virus to attack, it will multiply and increase. There will be a, a, a sudden rise in the HIV load within the blood. Okay, Once that increases, then the ability to transmit will also increase. So within the acute HIV infection stage, someone who can use the ART and retroviral therapy at this stage will significantly enhance the health of his body. Okay. Bryce Onamunga has raised his hand. I don't know if you have a question. Type if you are not unmuted, then I'll see it. Okay. So after the acute stage, if someone has gotten onto an ART, then the, the, the change from the acute to chronic will take time because now the viral load will be reduced because of the initiation of the ART. But the second stage after the acute one is the chronic infection stage. And this is also called the asymptomatic, okay? Because there are not any symptoms that you can see. So at that stage, you There are no symptoms that you can see at this point, okay? So at this stage, people may, they have the infection, but they don't have any related symptom for HIV. And at this, this now re-emphasizes the need for now diagnosis. Fio kupima na macho. Ati ya ukimwana wenyako hivu bwana wenyame menona wia neza kuwana ukimu kwenu. Okay, so you look at someone with your eyes and think that person is not infected. Yet, it is only that the symptoms which you relate with someone who is infected have not manifested yet. Okay, so... When someone has put on, has been put on ART, then this chronic infec uh, infection stage will not happen soon. Lakini kama hajawe kwa kwa hiyo dawa, then the chronic infection stage will happen almost immediately. Okay. But during the chronic stage, there are no symptoms, but this person is still infectious. So the person can still infect other people. Okay. The person can still infect other people. And even if you are taking ART, you still have to use protection. Not unless when you are thinking of maybe getting a child, you take the ART, you go to hospital, they continue monitoring your viral load. They tell you that it is undetectable. Then at that point, you are not infectious, but you are still infected. So after the chronic stage, then now comes the full-blown AIDS stage, which is now the final stage of infection. So at this stage, the virus has severely damaged the immune system and the body cannot mount any significant resistance to most opportunistic infections. Okay. So most of the opportunistic infection now will come in because the CD4 cells have been reduced in number. So you have a CD4 cell count that is very low. And once that happens, then now you are subjected to all manner of opportunistic diseases that you could ordinarily not suffer from. You begin now to suffer. Okay. So at, during this stage, someone now has a significantly high viral load. And because of that high viral load, they are able to transmit this virus to other people. Okay, so with AIDS, at the AIDS stage, opportunistic infections have set in because the virus has damaged the immune system. 
there is a very high viral load. You have a very high virus count and a very low CD4 cell count. Then because of the high viral load, during this stage, you are extremely infectious. Okay. So those are the three uh, stages of HIV progression. Okay. Someone was asking now, what about the testing? So, for you to determine whether someone is infected or not, it has to be done through a diagnostic test. Sio macho, sio nini apana, unapima, unaenda unapimwa na kit. Okay? So, the kits that are currently used of the greatest importance, they determine the status of an individual. Then once that person determines his or her status, it begins the safety journey of other people. If you are negative, you know that I need to protect the people that are around me. If you are, if you are negative, you protect yourself. If you are positive, you protect the people who are around you. So the most important stage for HIV management begins at testing. So you test yourself. But how is that done? So if you are HIV negative, once you end up to be HIV negative, so it just means there has not been a virus that is detected inside you. Then now, once you are negative, you begin to take steps that will avoid contracting the virus. Okay, we saw them, you continue using condoms protection, Okay, then you continue taking the preps, the pre-exposure prophylaxis, and just lead a life that is of good manners. If you end up to be HIV positive, for example, that is not the end of you. Okay, the first thing you need to do is visit a healthcare provider, talk to them about, they will talk to you about the antiretroviral therapy, and they will enroll you onto it. So the antiretroviral therapy of importance is it has to be enrolled on you as soon as possible. It will not cure, but it will help anyone who has the virus within them to live longer and healthier lives. Okay. So someone might ask, why should I go and test what if I'm positive? It's good to know that you are positive so that you can enroll yourself to an ART program. Because if you leave when you are positive and you don't know, then you will not be enrolled to an ART program and the infection will quickly progress towards AIDS. But if you are enrolled to an ART program, then you reduce your viral load, you can lead a normal life, when you want to have a child during the levels when your virus is undetectable, you can proceed and have unprotected intimacy and possibly get kids without infecting your partner just because you knew of your HIV status. So it is better to know that you are positive other than living when even you don't know whether you are negative or positive because when you are negative then you continue to leave ways that will enhance your negative status when you are positive you enroll yourself into programs that will help you to live a longer life and a life that is not just long but is also healthy but now most importantly you begin to come up with measures that will protect people that are around you okay who should get tested? Everybody should get tested. The factors that increase the risk, sex, of course, sharing injectables, needles, syringes, then drugs, okay? Because when you have drugs, you reduce your judgment. Then when you have an STI, when you have an STD, it increases your likelihood of getting AIDS. 
okay? When you have an STI, when you have an STD, because most STDs, the way you get them is through the same, same way you can also contract HIV. But some, the Naleta Vidonda, or they bring cuts in your private parts. And it, through these cuts, when you now get sexually engaged with someone else, then through those cuts, you can easily now have the HIV transmission happening. Also, when you get intimate to, with someone whose HIV status you don't know, okay? Should pregnant women get tested for HIV? Yes. Pregnant women should be tested so that it is not just about them, but about the new life they are carrying inside them. So if they end up being positive, then they can put on a prevention uh, therapy for the sake of the child. Okay. And if they are also uh, gotten to be positive, they can be told not to breastfeed the child. So when you are pregnant, it's important that you go and be tested. So what are the HIV tests that are present? We have one is the antibody test. The antibody checks for the presence of HIV antibodies within the blood or within the oral fluid. The oral testing kits will be testing the presence of the virus antibody within the oral fluid. So the antibodies, these are things that our bodies produce to help us fight against any foreign component in our body. So HIV will be a foreign component. Your body will produce something to fight it. Your body only produces an antibody against HIV if HIV is present inside your body. Okay, so for the antibody, you are testing for the presence of an antibody if there is a virus that will make your body to produce that antibody. So the kits that test the presence of the antibody will only be able to detect it after the antibody has been generated by your body. So in Amanisha, if you test using an antibody test kit before the antibodies have been produced, then you are likely to hit a negative result. But in, a, in essence, you will be positive. So the antibody tests, they are meant to work after a certain period of exposure, because then after that certain period, the antibodies will be present. So the antigen is a part of the virus. So the, the, the antibody is testing for what your body has produced against the virus. But there are other antigen kits. Okay, the antigen kits, and antigen is a part of a virus, a part of the virus that is inside you. So there will be a kit that detects the part, the presence, the real presence of a virus. Remember the antibody was detecting what your body is producing against the virus. But now an antigen test kit is detecting the actual presence of the virus inside your body. So which means now the antigen test will be more accurate than an antibody test. When you have the HIV infection, you have an antigen present. You have the HIV virus inside your body from that particular time. So if you have it now and we test using an antigen test kit, then it will return a positive result immediately. But if we are testing with an antibody test kit, it will only return a positive result if the antibodies have been mounted by the body's immune system. Then the last one is the nucleic acid tests. Okay, what we, we, we here we are calling the NATs, the nucleic acid tests. The RNA, which is the nucleic acid for the HIV virus, is now what the nucleic acid test will be looking for. So the nucleic acid test looks for the presence of a particular nucleic acid 
So for the HIV virus, we'll be looking for the presence of the RNA within our blood, the RNA for specific for that particular virus, in this case, HIV. So the nucleic acid tests are more accurate because they detect the presence prompto compared to the other two. So it means then depending on when the exposure happened, the different test kits can return different results. Okay, so depending with which test kit you've used, chances are that you can return a negative result when actually you are positive, only that what you are testing for has not been produced, is not present yet in your body. Okay. The HIV testing should be confidential, meaning if you have a girlfriend, for example, then at some point you, okay, chokora bitu kwa room, unapata, hey, kuna dawa. Anamezanga ARVs na ajayi kwambia. You don't keep shouting and telling your friends that imagine uyu dem kumpe akona ugonjwa. No. Okay. Testing and knowledge of someone's HIV status should be confidential. So for HIV testing, you go, you are tested alone. Then whoever tests you should not tell anyone. Okay. Should not tell anyone. It is you they need to tell. But it is also, for example, if you went for a HIV test, then you turn a positive result, but you go back and continue engaging in unprotected coitus with your, your partner without telling your partner that uh, this is my status, then that is illegal because you are infecting that person knowingly. So one, while the testing is confidential, the implications of that test should not remain confidential. Ukienda nyumbani na kimeumana, if you have a girlfriend, call them, tell them, uh, my dear, hii maneno kumbe imekuwa na muna hii. Let the partner also go for a test. If you are all positive, enroll. If you happen to be a discordant couple, put in measures to ensure that you continue being uh, negative. Okay. Mostly where you can get tested, most health facilities offer test services. The good thing with the health facilities is at least you'll be cancelled. Someone will talk to you. But currently, you can do it at the comfort of your sitting room or your bedroom. I try to discourage that because there are people who want to test, but wakipata wako na ugonjwa, they become, they are, they are always suicidal. So unapata mutuali, you, you, you find a test kit which returned a positive result and the person has killed him or herself. So when you are not stable, don't go for self tests. Okay, the best is go be tested from a health facility. Okay, be tested from a health facility. So the basics of HIV prevention. Okay, avoid the specific activities through which HIV can be transmitted. Unprotected sex or sex with the people whom you don't know their status, okay? Or getting intimate while under the influence of what? Drugs or alcohol. Because with that, you don't have proper judgment. Avoid fluids, semen, blood, presemino, okay? So there are people who will want, there is a lady who will want, for example, to go down on your boyfriend, then after that, before we begin now engaging, you will already have exposed yourself to the pre-seminal fluid, which will also, if that person is positive, the pre-seminal fluid carries the virus. 
So if you want to protect, protect all the way. You are a man, you want to suck your girlfriend's breast, but if you are now to begin getting uh, sexually intimate, you have a condom. Breast fluid also carries the virus. Okay? So reduce on such things. Use of condoms correctly every time uh, throughout the entire intimate session. But then if you anticipate based on the nature of the nature of your work, if you anticipate risk of getting HIV infection, then get the pre-exposure prophylaxis. If at all you suspect that you have been exposed, then get the post-exposure uh, uh, prophylaxis, what you call the PEP. Okay. So the transmission is through blood, semen, presemino, all the fluids within our bodies, they largely transmit that. Okay. How do you reduce that? The first way to reduce HIV transmission is getting tested. You get tested. When you get tested about it, you know your status. When you are positive, you know that I should now not risk other people. When you are negative, you know that you now need to protect yourself. The other way to reduce HIV transmission is you choose less risky sexual behaviors. Okay, Use condoms, avoid taking medicine, uh, drugs before getting intimate. Okay, Then correctly using condoms, limiting the number of sexual partners. Then getting tested and treated for STDs. When you have an STD, it, most of them will lead to cuts, to openings around your genitals. So when you have those cuts, they increase because there are sweat, flu, and other fluids that can easily pass through that cut. So when you have an STD that is not HIV, get tested, then you'll have it treated and cured. If it is caused by a bacteria or a parasite, it will be cured. But the STDs that are caused by viruses, sadly, you cannot. You don't have cure yet. Okay. Prevention, pre-exposure, and PEP. So take those drug regimens, then do not inject drugs. In the event that maybe you suffer from uh, diabetes and you have to use insulin injections, then don't share the equipment with other people. To me, I to wear with the care. Okay. To me, I to wear with the care. So, how do you then assume you have the virus? How do you ensure that you reduce where, uh, the chances that you can pass it to other people? Okay, when you have the virus, use condoms. You're already infected, use condoms. Okay, then the second one is let your partner take prep, the pre exposure. Then for you, be on ARTs, they will reduce the viral load within you. And if you are in any way injecting any drug, don't share the needles, or any other equipment with your partner. Okay. So the medicines that we use to prevent transmission is the post-exposure and the pre-exposure. So the post-exposure, it means taking medicines, so it's post, it's after the exposure. You take the, that HIV medicine within 72 hours. Okay, that will enhance chances that you prevent the infection. This PEP, the post exposure prophylaxis, should be only used in emergency situations, not for regular use by people who continuously expose themselves. Pregnant women, they can try and 
get tested. If at all they are positive, they will put they will be put on drugs. I think from the second trimester. Then upon birth, what as Alicia the normal way they will go through cesarean section. Then mutoto ataikewa kwa madawa for some time as they are monitored after birth. Then they should not breastfeed the child. Okay. They should not breastfeed the child. HIV testing, yes, recommended for pregnant people because it is not about the mother, it's about the new life that the mother is carrying. So the perinatal transmission is when HIV is passed from a person who has the, child, uh, the, 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 the virus to the child, either during pregnancy, childbirth, or breastfeeding. Okay, so is either during pregnancy, and that's why at some point now the mother will be put on some ART medication during pregnancy. Then during childbirth, what I kwamba wapunguze labor, na hiyo possible exposure of the child to the mother's blood during childbirth. That's why now they go for cesarean section. Then they also the other possibility where a mother can pass HIV infection to the child is through breastfeeding. That is now discouraged. Okay, so during breastfeeding, breast milk, mama nambiwa no, don't breastfeed. Okay. So perinatal transmission is also called mother to child. So it's the mother passing the virus to the child. So the HIV medicine will be preventing this perinatal transmission. Okay. It just reduces the risk of that perinatal transmission, one, by reducing the viral load in the mother. So when the HIV medicine is started early for the mother, the better. And how can that HIV medicine be started when the mother is tested? when the mother is tested. When someone, people who are HIV positive are trying to conceive, when ataka wazai mtoto, then wataanza kupewa the ART, the HIV medicines, so that wapunguze their viral loads inside their bodies to a level that is almost undetectable. Then at that point, wataambiwa sasa, you can try during this period to have a child. Okay. So someone will argue uh, HIV medicines safe during pregnancy. Yes, they are safe. Okay. They are safe during pregnancy. The pre exposure is when you are anticipating exposure. So pre-exposure is when people, the pre-exposure prophylaxis, pre, is when people who do not have HIV but are at risk of getting that virus take medicine to prevent the infection. Okay. So you are at risk, you take the medicine to prevent. The word prophylaxis means either to prevent or to control the spread of an infection. Okay. So when you you don't have the virus yet, but you think you are at risk of getting the virus, then what you do is you take that HIV medicine so that you try to control, you reduce the chances that you can get that virus. Okay. So the, the, the PrEP will be a combination. Okay. It will be a combination. And the, that particular combination will differ depending on a, one person to another. So if a person is exposed to HIV through either sex or injection, but they have the PrEP already inside, the PrEP medicine inside their bloodstream because they took it before, 
then it means that PrEP medication can stop the virus from attaching, from binding. The first step. Iyo virus inakuja kwa mwili inapata. Already there is the PrEP medicine yenye umechukua mapema. So it can stop the virus from binding to the cell. But if you, 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 when you take PrEP, for example, on Monday, don't go and be engaged in the sexual act on Thursday or Friday, thinking that either will work on Monday, it will be on Friday. Okay? So it's something that will not last in your body forever. So when you think that by nature of what you are doing, you are at risk, then you continuously have you to take the PrEP. But who should consider taking PrEP? Not just anybody, but there are specific people whom recommendations have been put. Because of you are negative and you are at risk, please consider taking PrEP. One, when you have a sexual partner who is HIV infected. Two, maybe you are uh, you work in a in a care as a caregiver. Uko na mzazi ama ndugu mwenyako na ugonjwa na wewe hauna. So you nurse, you wash this person, you take care of that person. Then you can take prep because you you are anticipating exposure. Huyu mtu anaweza anza ku bleed and you know. So you anticipate that by virtue of what you do. Okay, then there are people who have been diagnosed with an STD because the same way that the STD gets into your body is largely the same way that HIV also does what gets into your body. Okay, so the same people again who share injectables, you are sharing an injectable which is not advisable, but maybe you are mukona. Diabetes, you cannot afford the syringes. So you have to share the syringe. Then prevent yourself by using PrEP. Okay. PrEP is most effective when taken consistently each day. So which means when you are anticipating exposure and you use the pre-exposure prophylaxis, then you increase the rate of effectiveness. But to some people, it has side effects. Kuna wale watasikia kutapika, kuna wale. So it will come with all manner of side effects to different people. So when someone experiences this, another person will experience a different thing. Okay. So when you begin PrEP, you take PrEP, but you need also to continue with the other preventive mechanisms. Usianza kutumia PrEP na unawacha condom. Usianza kutumia PrEP na unawacha kuwa faithful. Usianza kutumia PrEP na unaenda kukunywa pombe. Okay? So when you are beginning this, PrEP is not a substitute. It's not substituting. It's not replacing the other preventive mechanism. It, it is only enhancing. Taking the HIV medicines within 72 hours after a possible exposure. When do you know you have a possible exposure? When you don't know the HIV status of the person you got engaged with. Okay, You don't know the health status of that person. Treat that one as a, possi as a possible exposure. Okay, treat it as a possible exposure. And the sooner PEP is started after a possible HIV exposure, the better. Okay, the better. The only sad thing with PEP is after you are prescribed with the PEP, the post exposure one, you will take that medicine consistently at least for 28 days. Okay. Yeah, so who should consider taking PEP? Remember, it has to be 
within 72 hours. When you have had an in engagement with someone whom you don't know their HIV status. So maybe you have been exposed to someone through sex, shared injectables, you are sexually assaulted, you are raped, or mulikuwa pali mukaikuwa involved kwa accident and uka damu yako na watu mukachanganyana. So in that particular process, the first thing is you should be given a pep because you don't know the health status of these other people. Okay. So most, as you can see, most of them are emergencies. Sio tu kitu kwamba utaenda inje, urudi, useme, ah, wacha ni meze leo, ni meze kesho. Emergencies. PEP must be started within 72 hours after a possible exposure. Okay. Then the recommendations are for specific groups of people, the adults, adolescents, children, pregnant women, and many other people. So it means PEP can be taken by largely everyone who is at a, at a possible risk of exposure. How well does it work? Start it and take it correctly. It is effective, but not 100%. The sooner you start, the better. So every hour counts. Ukianza toko fikiriati, ama ujama neza kuwa kunai, meza. Wacha kusema ati wacha ningoje kama ikifika sasaba ntakuwa ni mekohoa. Nikikohoa tu, yu ntaenda kumeza pana. The moment you are not sure, get started on PEP. Every passing hour counts. The longer you wait, the higher the risk. You would rather begin and realize that that person was negative than wait and end up realizing that that person was positive. Just like any other drug regimen, PEP also has some side effects. Most of them can be treated, but they are largely not life-threatening. Okay. If there is a question, I'll be happy to answer. But So, um, one thing you should know is um, most of you might think Kwamba, what we are teaching is a joke because you know it already, but there are always soups. What part of supplementary kabisa kwa unit? I'm not. The, I've not been teaching it. I just began teaching you. But for example, the current second years the Walipata 376 supplementaries kwa hii HIV okay so I see most of you just joke in the chat I hope you take it serious it appears like we nikitu raisi but then ningumu okay someone is asking how can one use PrEP in the absence of PEP PrEP is pre so once you have you are exposed, prep cannot work. Nikaba kusema umeweka get kukinga wezi na muizi ya kondani ya nyumba. Sasa get itasaidia na muna gani na kwa nyumba tayari. So prep only works, only helps before the exposure happens. Once the exposure has happened, is about pep. And pep, for it to work effectively, it has to be initiated as soon as possible. So if there is no pep, don't waste the prep, okay? Because it will not work. How many times should one go for the test? When, depending on the level of risk, okay? Depending on the level of risk. So most people who are sexually active, you have to go for continuous checkups. Okay. Because you can be tested today, then you get exposed in between. So your status can change. What if one take PEP and he or she is not infected? Will PEP have an effect on the health status of the person? There will be side effects because PEP is a chemical. But you would rather take it and you are not infected. 
Okay. So side effects will come for every chemical. Kuna watu akilamba sukari inafanya namna gani mwingine akikunywa juice anaumia namna hii. So the chemicals that are contained in anything will react with our bodies differently. Prep you take when you do not okay. I think we are likuwa na jibu. Can I can I came you test me go to the HIV uh, prevention unit the HIV control unit they will be able to help you is it oral kit purchasable at cheaper price i think it should be around 5 it was 500 shillings siju kama bado iko hiyo hata walikuwa wanaonyesha kwa tv kila mahali should have been 500 shillings the one you go buy the i think they were calling it oral quick okay they were calling it oral quick okay Testing will be at school on 14th of this week. Okay, the immaculate says that. You know, it was if we are Valentine's. So it's good to be tested before you go engaging on the events of the Valentine's Day. HIV, can HIV positive couples have HIV negative children? Yes. They get tested. They know their HIV status. They are put on ARTs. The ARTs will reduce the viral load. Then once the viral load has reduced, they will be told now to engage in unprotected coitus to have children. Once the, the woman becomes pregnant, she's put on ART. Then during birth, one has an azalisho through cesarean section. After birth, mutoto atapewa ART as they monitor the child, I think for three months, then the mother should not breastfeed the child. What about when an infected person takes ART until the viral load is much lowered? When she goes for the test, will the status be manifested or not? The status, the HIV status will return positive. The viral load, ikikuwa chini, ukipima the number of virus in the blood, haita onekana. But when you test for HIV, it will be positive. So you will be positive, but the virus is undetectable. But the HIV test will still return a positive. Okay. Okay. If there are no any other questions, then we can. Uh, can stop our class there. Uh, I think we are done with the first batch of notes I shared. I'll be sharing the second batch in preparation for the next week. Okay, so five minutes to sun is good time to stop the class. The cut will be done online. So just Hold your horses, Mutiani itakuja cut. But the final exam is face to face. But cut will be, we, we will organize an online cut, then you'll be told and mutafanya maneno. I want Andrew Aliko Meuliza, when is the cut? Sarah Cheriot, thank you very much. It's good to be appreciated. Okay. maswali. We can continue. Let's pick it up again next week. I will share the notes. Class reps, mukiona ni me sahau tafadali muni kumboshi. Okay. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a good week. Let's meet again on Monday. Okay. Bye bye.